Okay, I think we're going, we're live here. All right, so for those of you who are joining on um, Facebook, welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you who might be catching this on a Instagram feed, also welcome. You might be catching a delayed version of it. And, and then of course you, Tony, who are on my screen over here, you guys can't see them because you're on, uh, you're just looking at me, but I can see Tony and uh, Tony's, uh, Tony's my guest today. So guys, if you have been following me over the past few weeks, um, I've been sharing about the grind scheme of things. And you might be wondering, what is the grind scheme of things? I could go on about what it is, what it isn't. But basically, uh, in the world that we live in today, there is just a ton of information that we get about how to do things and how to win and how to be successful. And I mean, you know, yeah, what diet you should be on, what you should be reading, what you, what, you know, programs you should be um, listening to to become a better uh, person. And, um, and the grind scheme of things really realizes that ultimately, you know, one of the misconceptions about what it takes to succeed is being on this grind and this hustle. And if you're not on this grind, you're not on this hustle and somehow your life is not going to work out. Right. And, um, and you know, the radical idea in the grind scheme is that, um, it's not that grind and hustle and all that, you know, it can have its place, but it's overemphasized, right? That there are some nuances. There are some things that we really need to be paying attention to that, um, that we miss, right? Because we're so focused on this pop culture psychology of, you know, grinding. So today, the Grind Scheme of Things podcast focuses on um, the program known as Athletic Over 40, right? Is it Athletic Over 40 or Athletic After 40? Athletic After 40. Athletic After 40. Athletic yeah. After 40, right? And Athletic After 40 is all about really the opportunity for those of you who are <coughs> years old, right? <laughs> and, uh, and really over the years, perhaps you've seen yourself um, sort of challenged, I should say, right? Would that be a good word to use? Challenged, faced with some difficulties. You've tried the diets. You've tried to, you've tried to Google search your way to a, to a slimmer belly. Um, you, try to, you try to figure out what red 40 is. Um, but ultimately, there's a part of you that's actually maybe sad, depressed, anxious, worried about what it's going to take to kind of get you back to this maybe um, younger, younger phase of your life where you were more active, more, uh, more engaged, had more vitality. And as you're looking over the horizon, I kind of feel like 40s is that crest, <laughs> right? Because after 40, you start to, ooh, um, yeah, and you struggle with that. And just so I could kind of make sure I'm spot on with my uh, description of kind of where we're headed with this. Um, let's talk about this for a second. I just want to scroll through and find this. Can you still see me, Tony? Yeah, I got you. Okay, good. So, so my guest today is Tony Bevilacqua. Tony Bevilacqua is the founder of Athletic After 40. And just to share with you sort of the context of why this, this conversation is being had in the world today, there's basically a deluge of overwhelming amount of information about what men's health um, comp is comprised of, right? What makes a healthy man well? Um, what, um, wh what is it for him to be healthy? What is it for him to be athletic uh, over 40? What should he be eating more or less for optimal health? What, uh, you know, what's drinking too much? What's enough exercise? Um, how athletic and, and, and active should he be as he ages? Should he still be able to dunk a basketball? That was really me. That's, <laughs> that's me, Tony, speaking through my questions because I always had a dream. I always had a dream that I could dunk a basketball. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me switch screen. Still time. <laughs> um, okay, so, so, you know, should he be able to dunk a basketball, right, or just settle for layups? Um, how does a man recover from injury and get back in full athletic mode? Well, my guest today has a track record with helping men address these questions and more and regain confidence in being able to uh, become their most athletic self after 40. Uh, he's someone who actually works specifically with men over 40. Doesn't mean if you're approaching that age or you have far exceeded that age um, that you can't, you know, get some guidance. But his sort of uh, sweet spot of people that he's been able to produce some remarkable re results for are in that age category, age window. Um, 
and uh, and they've you know in some cases lost their athletic uh, abilities or maybe they still are athletic, but they just know that they, there's a next level for them, right? That they still haven't tapped into and they wanna get back on track of being active again, regardless of where they are in the ability spectrum. So as I mentioned, Tony is the founder of Athletic After 40, a program that coaches guys over 40 on how to turn back the clock on an aging body so that they can look, feel and perform great. And more specifically, it's the back to basics approach guys over 40 are using to drop as much as, of course, 25 pounds is just a number just to start off, but they do in some cases more than that, uh, of course. And so they can live healthy athletic lives without spending hours in the gym. And I don't know about you, I don't have a lot of time uh, or as much time as I used to. So I definitely don't wanna spend hours in the gym. And this program also does this without uh, having people count calories and waste valuable time on programs that don't work. So some of you listening might be approaching 40, B40 or over 40, and some of you might be uh, significant others, okay? So in other words, you might have a partner who is over 40 or approaching 40, and you're concerned about their health, even though they may not be talking to you about it, but you're like, honey, <laughs> you need this program. <laughs> um, so if you are in that category, um, or in some cases, maybe, um, you know, you're someone who's uh, struggled with cutting the noise to getting your questions answered, right? Um, today's guest is exactly who you need to be talking to, right? And at least at the very mi minimum, s listening to in order to hear some of the radical perspective that he has on well-being. And, and let me just say this, Tony, I know that, um, you know, you don't touch on this in your program because it's at, uh, athletic after 40 for you know, men over 40, but ladies, if you just happen to be a lady who's listening to this because, you know, you're just curious, let me tell you some of the things that I heard uh, from watching um, Tony's program um, really just uh, blew me away, right? And I think they're universal realities that we all face um, when it comes to making decisions about whether it's food, exercise uh, routines, like, so, you know, if you are a woman that feels like, hey, look, I'm not a guy, I'm not over 40, um, listen, listen on, because there are some nuggets here that you're going to get for yourself and be able to pass on to someone who needs to hear this. And of course, if you're not over 40, if you're under 40, you're in your 20s, there's still some nuggets in here that I want you to, want you to really, really get. So, um, so that's just a little bit of context, right? And so let's just jump right into this, give you a few facts uh, about Tony. Um, so one of the things that blew me away about uh, my guest here today is that he defeated cancer twice, right? Now, most people, maybe they don't get cancer once, right? That's good news. And then they get it once and then it goes away and that's whew, good news, really good news. But then they get it twice. And it's like, it's like the universe is like, okay, knucklehead, I don't think you get this, right? So, so Tony's got, Tony had cancer twice and whooped cancer's ass twice. <laughs> and uh, he had a transformational event the second time around, okay? Uh, he's been married uh, 17 years and has an amazing son who's 12 years old now, who wasn't even supposed to be here. His name is Lucas. And he pursued his passion for health and fitness and nutrition for years now, and worked closely with thousands of folks in the, uh, in the 21 years that he's been in the game from all walks of life, fell in love with the sport of weightlifting, and um and you know which is an olympic sport and he's coached and traveled nationally and internationally with the u.s weightlifting uh team or as a weight u.s weightlifting coach and crossfit coach so after 24 uh, 21 years in uh personal coaching and and gym ownership um and, and in-person coaching and gym ownership he decided to give it all up to pursue more freedom now the secret to this when i talk about more freedom here is that um the model right, that Tony operates under is a, is a virtual model. So um, a lot of his clients, if not maybe 100% of your clients, Tony, is that right? Right yeah. now? 100%. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 100% of your clients right now are virtual, right? And so he's able to produce these results without having to step inside of a gym or show, show up uh, for in-person conversations, right? So um, so that's what he, you know, is that's what's implied here by per really pursuing more and really being able to scale impact, right? When you are able to scale, right, and 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 have things work this way, it it really, really, really makes a huge difference. And um, 
And in the end, you know, despite being scared, as he puts it, scared shitless, he pursued an online coaching business, which is what he gets an opportunity to do today. So Tony, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, being on today, man. I, I appreciate you, appreciate your work, appreciate you taking the time out to ha have a conversation with uh, those of us who are uh, in that category um, of really needing some guidance and some insight and, uh, and some help, man. Like, man, we need some help. We're tired of try to looking at Instagram pictures and feeling like we got to be swimsuit models or Mr. Uh, Olympia, you know, champion. So thank you so much, man, for, for being here and being able to share your wisdom and your nuggets with us today. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. I'm super happy to be here. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, so listen, super happy to be here. Awesome. Good, good to hear you, man. Um, so um, now I'm sure some of the things that some of my guests uh, who are listening in are curious about, are how on earth like t tell us about this cancer thing man like when i read that i was like defeated cancer twice like what what right can you talk to us a, a little bit about that and what that has to do with like you know where you are now yeah and i i just gotta say like you when you were sort of doing your introduction you said something that really kind of hit me you said you know, people get cancer once sometimes and they'll get over it. And that's great. Some people get cancer twice. They get over it once. They get it again. And it's like God saying, hey, knucklehead, you haven't yeah. figured this out yet. And that yeah. is, in a nutshell, I feel like that's exactly what happened for me. Yeah. Like, I didn't get it the first time. I was kind of, I went into this like victim mentality, poor yeah. me. You yeah. know, I was pointing fingers. It's my genetics. It's this. <laughs> And I think just like you said, you know, it's like, well, he didn't get it the first time. Let's give it to him again. Right. And the second time I got it, I'm like, wait a minute. We need to start thinking about everything completely different. Mm -hmm. I need to stop playing the victim. I need to stop putting myself on the back burner. I need to take time for myself to build myself into the person who I ultimately want to become so that I can serve my family and my, my world around me, right? To yeah. make an impact. Yeah. And it hit me that second time. Mm, yeah. And that's what, that's my transformation moment. So right. had I not had that opportunity, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, I would not be here with you today. Yeah. If you didn't have that. I don't know where that, I'd be. That, 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 that uh, gut check, soul check moment. Yeah. Like I knew that I had to, I had to change. I had to become better. You know, yeah. I couldn't go through life as a victim and it's, Unfortunately, I see that happen to some folks. Sometimes they go into that victim mentality and they're never able to pull themselves out of it. Yeah. But you have to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a necessity. You know, you talked about something, uh, and, you know, I got a chance to, of course, do some research in your training and you talk about something about extreme ownership. And I, uh, can you speak to that? Cause I think that was one of the light bulb moments for you, right? Yeah. hundred percent. Take, take and a that was, to share about that. Yeah, that was, that was one of the things that happened on the second time is like, I, I knew that I had to take responsibility for the situation. I had to take ownership. Like I had to completely commit. And it goes back to the, to the thing with, with victim. When you're a victim, you're not taking ownership of the situation. You're sort of right. succumbed to the circumstances, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I knew that I could no longer do that. I was no longer going to be that person. I was going to take the bull by the horns I was going to get myself healthy and I was going to come out the other side of this cancer in a much better place than I came in. Mm. Yeah. And the only way that you can do that is when you take responsibility. It's right. not your genetics. It's not this. It's not the doctor's fault. It's nobody's fault, but your own. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about that is when you can really embrace that, it gives you power. Yeah. Yeah. And then you and get that's your what power I, back. That's what I heard. in, in as you talked about it, um, you know, in your, uh, in your training, you know, you really shared about like, you can't shift it. If you, you know, if, if it's someone else's fault, then yours, then you can't do anything about it. Right. Um, and I think for, for anyone who's in this, you know, sort of this subject matter that we're talking about today is relevant to um, the opportunity that someone has is really not when they work with you is an opportunity to take extreme ownership, right. Of where they are. Right. So the body fat that might've accumulated, um, the lack of energy, um, you know, everything else there, the injuries that, that are still there, the lack of healing that's taking place, you know, all of that is a function 
right? Of a, of a neglect of ownership, right? Um, which is what, of course, being with a coach really facilitates. It facilitates and puts the uh, spotlight back on, on the person who's getting the coaching to really see where they leave what I call where they leave their power on the table, right? Or their power is leaking. So, um, so now since you came out of this with your, um, you know, with your experience, like, what does that have to do now with like the program? Like, how did you even get here to being now sort of like this sought after go-to person for guys who are over 40, who want to get their, uh, athletic, uh, mojo back? Yeah. And I, you know, I think, I think a lot of it had to do with that, that way of thinking, because I know that there's a lot of guys out there who have very good intentions and maybe are not in the victim mentality. Maybe they really are trying to take ownership and they're trying to, to find the right solution for them. The problem is, in my opinion, is the health, nutrition, fitness space is a freaking disaster. Yeah, There is so much chaos out there that even the most well-intentioned, powerful person can go down a lot of the wrong roads Yeah, where it becomes, I mean, there, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat, but it can yeah. be overly complicated. Most guys will jump into something, see some results and then fall off the wagon because it's unsustainable. Yeah. You know, so as I went through my transformation, as I went through my journey, you know, I, I, I had to keep refining this. I had to keep making it as simple as possible, mm -hmm. but yet very, very effective yeah. so that you can live a really healthy life in a great looking body, right? I mean, right. It, it's certainly possible. And I've been, you know, I'm my own best experiment. I've been doing this for 17 years now yeah. on myself. And I, I even look in the mirror and I'm like, really? Like, I'm going to be 46 <laughs> in six months. I'm like, I shouldn't look like this, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's and awesome. I'm not counting calories. Yeah, I'm not training like an Olympic athlete. You know, right. I, I've trained Olympic athletes, but I'm not doing that myself. Right. I'm just keeping myself in a super healthy, you know, position. And it's possible right. without doing all of the chaos. Yeah. So talk to me, you know, when, when you were diagnosed that second time, so you said 17 years you've been at this. So is Athletic After 40 the program. And, you know, I also add in there in parentheses, you know, the title of this podcast is really athletic and kind of sexy after 40, right? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> right? I love it. So for guys who are looking to be athletic and kind of sexy after 40, um, you know, this is, uh, this is also, you know, relevant, right? Uh, if the kind of sexy part really is appealing to, <laughs> appealing to you. Who doesn't want to be sexy, right? Everybody <laughs> at, wants to be sexy. And at the very, at the very least, kind of, right? Because, you know, <laughs> from your bold claim for some to say, ah, too much, kind of, yeah. right? Um, so the idea here, you know, is from when you had the cancer to like now, did you start out thinking like, okay, I got cancer, I'm struggling, um, and I'm going to create a great program 10 years from now. That's going to help men over the, all over the world. Like, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So I, I was in, I, I'm, I've always been fascinated by human performance. Mm -hmm. So like, I loved watching athletes perform. I loved the human body and how it moved and what it was capable of, and like all things performance. And I really loved just just what the body is, is capable of. It's amazing. So I kind of always had that underlying thing and I even went to college and got a kinesiology degree. Mm -hmm. So I kind of always had that thing. So it was just a very easy thing for me to kind of shift into, but I knew that I had a lot of learning to do mm -hmm. when I went through that second round of cancer. So I ended up literally hiring like every expert in every area you could ever imagine that had to do with health. You know, I was traveling all over the country. I spent all of our money and mm -hmm. then some yeah. just to learn as much as I could because it was so important to me, right? I mean, I was mm -hmm. in this place where it was kind of like a live or die thing. Yeah. So I went out and I did this and I sought this knowledge. And the more that I learned, I was able to just kind of develop this program for me. And then I, I, would start implementing it in with others and it it just worked and then like I said it just kept evolving and evolving so I've been in the industry for a very long time and uh, it's always kind of evolved but the interesting thing is as it evolves it gets simpler mm. gotcha so your program gets simpler as you've kind of gone through this process 
And that's the thing, that's the thing that, that I think comes sometimes with mastery. When you've been doing something for yeah. a very, very long time, right. you start to prune away a lot of the, the fluff, right? Yep. That's exactly right. Yeah. And the more you can, the more you can distance yourself from a lot of the, the, the fluffy stuff, I call it fluff, right? Yeah. The easier it's going to be for you to, to sustain mm -hmm. your path and your intention, your North star, you know, for my North star, it's, it's, I want to be the healthiest person that I can possibly be. Yeah. That's so, my North star. And that's, that's what drives me. And so as you kind of went through that process, so it clicked at some point that like, yeah, like when did it become like, okay, I can help other people with this. When did that hit you? Yeah. So I was, I was already, I was already doing some, some like personal training. I was a personal trainer right out of college. So I was okay. doing a little bit of that already, yeah. but it just enhanced that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to just like, yeah. like blow it up, Okay, you know, because if you right. level yourself up, yeah. It's just to make everything sense. grows. Yeah. 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 So I was sort of in it already, but I just yeah. got better. Yeah. And, and then of course the slap in the face was that given that you were in it already and all of a sudden, you know, you get diagnosed. It's like, wait, what, how, what? I don't understand. Right. I'm supposed to be the uh, <laughs> example <laughs> of wellness. Yeah. Um, yeah. And wow. What a, the, now that's, that's transformational, right? To kind of be in the industry, then be diagnosed. I, I, full disclosure. Yeah. I was in a really bad place physically and mentally before yeah. my first round. So I was drinking like crazy. I was eating terribly. Like I was in a, yeah. I was just not, I was in a bad place. You're like, like an invitation for Canada. You're, you're like cancer. Nah, nah, totally. Nah, like, nah. Come and give me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's I hilarious. was in self-destruct mode, even though I was yeah. like training clients. It was like the weirdest thing. So wow. there was no, it was just a really weird place for me. Wow. And it wasn't until God said, Hey, knucklehead, you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's your second dose. Here's your second yeah. dose. Wow. And then I'm like, so that's when it right? clicked. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, there's yeah. always, there's always the principle of the, um, of the wounded healer. Right. Um, it, which really is a metaphor for the fact that, you know, those who end up really doing the most, uh, good are the people who've hurt the most, right? And, 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 and or been recipients of a certain kind of pain that they now alleviate in the world. So, you know, that's sort of like a mythological path that most anyone, right? Like you described mastery rise, they go through, right? You gotta go through, go through um, the crap to get to the cream. So that's what it's been like. So let's shift gears a little bit and get right into some of the things that people are probably wondering about. And although I kind of have spoken, used kind of my own version of what I think who you help are, um, like, who is, who is this conversation for? You know, um, you know, like, it's especially given that, you know, we're in this time right now where people are hyper distracted and, and they're wondering like, okay, you know what, when, you know, do I click off of this now? Like, should I even continue listening? Yeah, that's, that's nice for you. You beat cancer twice. Uh, you know, you're coaching people, but like, who should still be listening um, at, at this point and, and why? Yeah, I think, I think anybody, even though I serve guys over 40, health is, in my opinion, it's the most important thing, right? It's the number one asset that we have that we need to care for. So everything that I do and everything that I say applies literally to everyone, right? right. Anytime we can take better care of ourselves. Yeah carries over into our life, right? The healthier I am, the more I take care of myself, the more I can, the more I can put out into the world. So, you know, yes, my program is athletic up to 40. I work with guys over the age of 40 who have good intentions of being their yeah. most healthful self That's right. and that they need some help finding the right path to go on, mm -hmm. you know, right. They, they can simplify the whole thing, but the message is really for anybody, you know, anytime yeah. I can get anyone to eat better, Mm -hmm. to exercise and move their body, right? Yeah. Sleep good, yeah. to manage stress. Anytime we can do those things, it can transform you in so many ways, yeah. in a positive way, right? And those are the things that people usually look over. I think a key word that you used there was uh, guys with good intentions, <laughs> right? Like, it's like, you know, I'm trying, I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to eat less, fill in the blank. Or I eat more, fill in the blank. Um, you know, I, we just, you know, I just joined a gym, right? And, and those intentions ultimately 
don't produce the results, right? Um, and, and one of the things that I noticed about your program is um, that it's, it's got a special sauce to it, right? Um, and, and there's like a secret sort of factor that allows guys to be able to get to where they need to be. And, and can you, you know, without giving it all away, like, you know, there's a particular model that I know you use and you could speak to a, a little bit about that is that X factor because look, the noise is out there. Everybody's got the gym membership. Everybody's eating less carbs and less fats or eating the right fats or doing da 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 Like, so like what makes your situation different? And before I forget also, um, for anyone who's also listening in here, why shouldn't they, why shouldn't they like not skip this podcast, right? Like whether they're watching it on video and like kind of switch to a different video or listening to the podcast, like, What's the risk that they run if they, if they skip what's going to come after this point in the conversation? Yeah, well, why don't, why don't we just say, let's, let's give you some, some super simple things that you can take from here, mm -hmm. like today, that you can start applying into your life. Yeah. That's going to be a game changer for you in, in your nutrition, in your fitness. And uh, we can even talk about sleep. Like we can, I don't know if we'll have time to cover all those things. Cause I, yeah. I could literally go for hours, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, what will give some, some really actionable things that people can take with them to be able to implement immediately. Some simple things yet really, really effective. And, and I know uh, Tony's probably being a little bit shy here, but guys, uh, at the end of this conversation, Tony does have something to offer and share for those of you who are still uh, really engaged in the conversation that I think is uh, priceless, right? Um, that you have an opportunity to, to take him up on, okay? So, um, so if you're tuned in, stay, stay listening because, uh, you know, I, I wish I, you know, I, I might even have to try to sneak, get a gift and be like, hey, Tony, help me out. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, but all that said, you know, special sauce wise, after all, everything else has failed. Um, I know you talked about a, a, a particular uh, triangle of some sort, like what was it called? And it, 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 so I don't butcher it. Like there's a particular sort of methodology or model that you used that really like blew me away when I learned about it. That's, uh, that's your secret, in, you know, this, your, your wow factor. Like, what is that? Because most people are thinking like, well, what's really different? Yeah, 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 Tony. Like, but what's really different and why? But you talked about simplicity. And I want you to really, really speak on this because I think, you know, it's easy for us to dismiss what we think is simple and we're looking for complex solutions. But there's a way that you talk about the simplicity of that uh, model that had me go, huh, I, I never really thought about that. So can you speak to that? Yeah. So the model I think you're referring to is my, tri I call it the triangle of transformation, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly Actually, it. a triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We yeah. got these three points and these are yeah. the three foundations of what changes you. Um, I always say physically, because that's, that's one of the things that we can see in the mirror, but it also will help to change your, your, your thinking as well. Mm -hmm. But the triangle of transformation, there's three big things. Yeah. So each of the points is uh, nutrition, fitness, and sleep. So if we want to change the way that you look, the way that you feel, the way that you perform, those are the three areas that we really need to focus on. Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit more than that. There's something in the center of that triangle that's most important. And that's, of course, taking action, right? Yeah. It's one thing to have a lot of knowledge and one thing to know a lot of things. But until you really take action on these things, nothing's going to change, right? Yeah. And, you know, the thing that got me... Oh, go ahead. Were you going to add something to that? Yeah. And I think it's important that we, we look at each of those areas because when yeah. we get into different solutions, when people join a gym or when they go on a diet, a lot of times they're so focused on that one thing that they leave some of the other things out mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work as well. Yeah. It's not as effective. You know, we yeah. need to bring these three things together in a way that's literally going to transform your life. So, you know, the, the cynic right in me is going, you said sleep and what else? Nutrition. Nutrition, uh-huh. And sleep. Uh, so sleep, and nutrition, and fitness. Okay. So so you mean to tell me, Tony, you know, I've got this, you know, donut around me, right? In the midsection. And, you know, yeah, I'm a little bit winded and like, okay, sleep, nutrition, and fitness. Oh, wow. Big deal. Right? Like, so 
<laughs> what <laughs> right like you could i can yeah. hear the cynic like oh great i tuned into this podcast so this guy mr u.s olympic or u.s team lifting guy <laughs> tell me i need to sleep more eat better and uh and and like work out Woo-hoo! right <laughs> but that's the that's the that's the deadliest thing right like to be cynical about that because there's some things you said about sleep that i had not really considered considered about sleep there's some things you said about nutrition that i hadn't considered about nutrition and there's some things of course naturally the fitness part actually is probably the easiest part right as far as breaking it down um and 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 we'll get to that that last part last because that's where people usually think like well athletic you got it but let's start with that sleep part because like it's it's like a it's like one of those like oh sleep really yeah i get it you know sleep eight hours a night blah 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 but can you break down what you said about sleep in that training and, and inside of your your model so that people can really understand like oh it's not just oh wow well, yeah i get it you know i was asleep yeah yeah and it, with sleep i mean there's just so much to talk about but it's just it, what, what i never really realized and this was just within the last five to ten years there's been a lot more research coming out around sleep and how it affects really every physiological thing that happens in your body. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always really fascinated by some of this stuff, but let's just talk about like a weight loss thing. So if you're carrying extra body fat, mm-hmm. which a lot of guys over 40 are, if you're carrying extra body fat and you're not taking your sleep seriously, like if you're not getting continuous sleep, if you're not sleeping seven to nine hours a night, it will affect your hormones mm. in a way that will put your uh, put your body in a position where you're going to get fatter. And the interesting thing is, yeah. what what happens that if if you're tired, so let's say let's say I only slept four hours last night, and I'm sure you've, you've been there, done that, right? Yeah. What, what do you feel like the next day? What are your energy levels like? It's just awful, right? Like yeah. you're just kind of dragging your butt around. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do anything. You're crabby. Like it's just, it's kind of an awful place. And when you eat food, that food doesn't, your body doesn't want to use that food for energy. Instead, it wants you to go to sleep. It wants you to rest. So what does it do to the food? Um, store it doesn't digest it yeah it stores it away right yeah it, it, it digests it gets into the bloodstream but then there's signaling and this comes from the hormones and i don't want to get too deep into this but it comes mm-hmm. the hormones the fat cells yeah. the only way you get fatter by the way is if your fat cells get bigger that's the only way the door opens on the fat cell and then stuff goes in gotcha and if that door is popped open which inadequate sleep will pop that door open. Yeah. It's a way for your body to keep your energy levels low so that you go to sleep. Yeah. To catch your to body catch up wants on the sleep that you don't rest. have enough it of. It wants to be healthy. Yeah. 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 So I mean it's it's it can be detrimental. And if you fall into that pattern for a long period of time, which I know a lot of guys, especially like busy, you know, yeah. professional guys get into these these habits of not sleeping very much. Yeah. Um and I mean, I was there, right? Sleep when you're yeah. dead was kind of my mantra, right? You know, for the first thirty years of my life, right? Yeah, uh, that can be that can be a game changer, and mm-hmm. it's amazing to see some of the research and some of the things out there. How even by not changing calories, yeah, which this is kind of mind blowing. Even not changing calories, we can change the the um, the uh, the body fat in mice just by how how well they're slept. Gotcha. Like so, it's fascinating, right? Yeah. So people, I, I think the connection now that someone might be getting is they never really identified with um, the relationship between sleep and weight loss. Yeah. Right. Yeah, or for sure. Sleep and fat. Right. Yep. Um, that's a connection. That's a, a wow moment. I think for some it's a really, I mean, you know, people, are like, ah, yeah, no, I know I need to get more rest, but they don't necessarily see the connection between that. Um, And then that leads me to the next leg of that triangle, which is um, nutrition. And I know that um, nutrition is one of these things that's really just, I think you use the word messy, right? And in your description, right? Is that the world of nutrition today 
is just messy, right? And and I would love for you to kind of speak to that because a lot what I remember seeing in that program was everything that I like. I didn't even read all those words, but I knew like those words scare me when I see them on a food label, uh, on a on a yeah on a product <laughs> product label. So like, can you speak to that nutrition component in 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 what it entails? And, and by yeah, the way, yeah. if, if out of curiosity, if you have like a JPEG or a PNG or something like that of that diagram, I could always flash it up. Um, or if you want to flash it up or whatever, however it plays out. But, uh, but anyway, oh, yeah. you want to draw, or you might even draw it out. That's fine too. No, uh, I, I, cause I don't remember them all, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you that slide and okay. you can post it later if you want. Okay. Perfect. 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 Okay, great. So let's talk about the nutrition component. Um, and, and what you shared about that. I found that really interesting. So my, my whole intention was, and this, this started with me, right? Because yeah. when I was going through my second bout of cancer, I was trying to figure out my nutrition and I was going and visiting with all these nutritionists and all these, these experts. And it was always the same thing. Like we had to counter calories. We had to track how many grams of carbohydrates and proteins and fats we were doing. I was doing blood tests to measure my, um, my mm -hmm. vitamins and minerals and amino acids right. and all these things, right? I was doing all these tests and it was just, it was so mind-blowingly complicated that it may have served me to some degree back then, but I knew that there was no way I was going to be able to sustain this whole thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the messaging that we're seeing when we pull up, you know, nutrition on Google, yeah. what are the words that we're seeing? Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, you know, flavonoids, omega, yeah. this omega, that, uh, yeah. um, you know, we go on lycopene, like there's so many words, right. And they're, yeah all these like scientific words and we sort of fall into this this belief that we have to be managing all of these things yeah so i'm like okay how can we get rid yeah. of all sure of do. this mess how can we get rid of this and we just simplify this thing so we don't have to worry about all of those things yeah and it it became almost like stupidly simple for me and i'm like you know what yeah here it is here's the prescription meat yeah. veggies nuts seeds and fruit five things. Yeah. If you consume the majority of your, the, if you consume the majority of things that you put into your face come yeah. from those five categories, yeah. you will win 100% of the time. Yeah. You don't have to worry about, did I get enough protein? Did I get enough carbohydrates? Did I get enough fat? Did I get enough, you know, vitamin C? Did I get enough vitamin D, yeah. E, F, K, fat soluble, <laughs> water soluble, all these things. Yeah. If you eat from those five categories, yeah the chances of you being deficient nutritionally is very, very low. Mm. So with those five categories, meats, veggies, nuts, and fruits. And seeds and fruit, yeah. And seeds and fruits, okay, yep. Um, you know, I think the question becomes like, well, how much, right, of that? And I'm sure you get into that as far as your program is concerned. Um, but I think maybe that's what sometimes people are consumed or concerned about, right? Is, you know, oh man, I eat, you know, and I, and I think we all kind of know when we eat a little too much of something, right? Like we all know that moment. We're like, uh, I shouldn't be up here at this table again, but, uh, you know, um, yeah. you know, we do that. But at the same time, um, how do we know how much is too much? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like, a great question. Yeah. And um, my, my model is, is, is quite a bit different than the traditional models because and let me ask you, cause I would love to just hear what, what you think of this. Yeah. Um, if I was to say to you, okay, buoy, you know, you need to lose, let's say you got to lose 20 pounds. I know you don't, but let's just say, sure. Um, so you're going to, you're going to need to go on a diet. What's the first thing that you think that you're going to have to do to lose that extra body fat? Well, I'm, well, whatever uh, I'm eating that I think is labeled as like fatty, I'm going to eat less of it or try to eliminate it. Right. Yeah. So less. Yeah. Yep. Use uh, the word less. Yep. Eat less. Decrease your calories. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's the, right? that's the, that's the buzzword. Eat less calories. Yeah. Consume less calories. Yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah. So typically the first thing we think about is like the quantity thing, right? We've got to, we've got to limit ourselves. We've got to decrease that stuff. Right. And there is some truth to that, mm -hmm. but here's what I find. So my model, we focus on the quality of the food. Yeah. What is quality? Meat, veggie, nuts, seeds, fruit. Yeah. Right. 
instead of the quantity of food. And I find most of the time, yeah. if we can just get people eating the right foods, we no longer have to concern ourselves with the quantity. The likelihood of you overeating when you're yeah, eating what I would consider to be real food yeah. is much, much lower, right? Yeah. Sit down and try to have three T-bone steaks <laughs> as opposed to you know, only having a few chips out of the bag. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. You know, Good point. it's the processed, refined Good. foods that tend Good. to get us into this state of overeating, That's overconsumption. Right. True. And when we can go back and sort of, and I always say that like, like real food, you have to have a belief in mother nature. Yeah. You, know, you have to have this belief in mother nature that mother nature is, has put everything on this planet for us to consume, for us to be able to not just survive, but mm -hmm. survive and thrive without right. having to pull our calculator out every time and track calories. Mm-hmm. That's right. No, you're, you're right. Yeah. You made a great point in that. Um, and, and when I, you know, thought about it, it there is a preoccupation. It's, it's interesting. I think in, in the process of counting, counting calories and sort of being what you see, you called it, uh, trying to be a nutritional scientist, right. Um, you know, we end up stressing ourselves out. Right. And, uh, which then is like counterproductive, but then, which then makes us even, you know, more prone right? To being an unhealthy version of ourselves. Um, so then the third um, leg of that triangle, third kind of point on it is fitness, right? And I think uh, this is one of those things that's probably like, you know, going to give people a wow moment as well, as far as what fitness, what the minimal um, tools are and uh, practices for being fit. Can you speak to that? Yeah, yeah. And if you remember, like one of the things I was saying before was I'm, I'm, I've always been fascinated with human performance. Yeah. Right. I've always been fascinated with athletes. So I, I, I was jokingly say to people like, I don't care how big your muscles are. I don't even care how lean you are. Yeah. I'm interested in what your performance looks like. Yeah. Because there's a lot of guys out there that are like, you know, you, you see him walking on the street, you're like, that guy's jacked. <laughs> right. Yeah, but there's, there's like not, you know, like his health is, you know, could be, I don't know, yeah. but his health could be in the, in the tank, you know, he might not be able to run more than 400 meters without gassing out. Yeah. Um, he might have back problems. You know, we, we, we don't know just because somebody looks like a certain way. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean that they perform well at all. Yeah. And again, I'm living proof. I'm a 160 pound guy. Yeah. Like I do circles around a lot of people that look like they should be crushing me Right. when we're looking at performance, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways we can look at performance, but I, I like measurable data. Like I like numbers mm -hmm. and I want to make you strong, but I also want to give you a gas tank. Yeah. And then we want to sort of combine those two together mm -hmm. instead of separating them. Right. Right. Yeah. Real life. It's not just about being super strong. It's not yeah just about having a gas tank yeah. real life rewards those who have both and can right. combine the two together yeah. yeah yeah so so you know you mentioned something i remember in that section um of your work you know the people who are like super you know maybe they got the endurance or they run a lot but they don't necessarily have the strength and you got the people who end up in the gym and they don't necessarily um have the stamina right um and there was something that you said about gyms that really blew me away and and how they don't really build strength i mean not like strength as you talked about it and the illustration that you used was how you know thinking of the body as uh one big muscle as opposed to uh, smaller parts. And, and that part really got me. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. And I kind of relate this the same way as we relate to nutrition, right? Yeah. We've taken this beautiful food and we've broken it down into all these little parts. Mm -hmm. And then we obsess over all the little pieces. Yeah. Yeah. We've done the same thing with fitness. We've taken the, this beautiful machine that is the human body. Yeah. That's coordinated and balanced and beautiful, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. we've broken it down into all these little individual pieces. And then we create routines around each of those muscle groups, like, and I've been there, like I've done that. Like I used to spend an hour working on my biceps, <laughs> you know, like really? And they grew like a half an inch. <laughs> Gains, man. Gains. Yeah. Gains. Yeah. So, 
you know, we, we, when you look at human performance, when you watch it, when you watch amazing athletes, when you watch mom pick up her kid, mm-hmm. when you watch dad move and mulch, yeah, it looks nothing like that stuff, right? right. It looks nothing like that. Like the, right. the real world carryover is just not there. Yeah. Right. So the bodybuilding routines, which tend to be still alive and well in many of the local gyms, if your goal is just to live a healthy, high functioning life where you have enough um, mm-hmm. fitness to be able to take on whatever challenge might come up in your life, known or unknowable, then that's not serving you best, right? Mm. And then we can take it another level. Like if you've got body fat to lose, you don't need to be just spending a whole bunch of time on your bicep. We mm. want to use the entire muscle, the entire system, right? Right. So the, my, my biggest pet peeve has always been when you walk into a gym, and I think this is what you're referring to. Yeah. When you walk into a gym and you look around, 90% of the equipment in there has seats on it, chairs yeah. with like, with like a cushion back that you can just kind of lean on and relax, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, where, where is that? Unless you plan on standing on stage you right, know, right, doing right, a, right, in right, a bikini, right. which is totally fine. No judgment. That's cool. Yeah. But for most folks, the guys mm-hmm. who I work with, that's not what their interest is. They want to right. look good. They want to feel good. Yep. And they want to perform well enough to be able to run around with their kids or, you know, spend time with their wife and travel and enjoy, just enjoy life. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that point, and I think I want to underscore it, um, guys, for what I, from what I was listening to when I was, you know, going through your work, when you mentioned how um, my, gym or I'm not currently, you know, a member of a gym, but like how in a gym form, um, we have gyms that everything in there has a seat in it. Right. And you said, so look at your gym. And I think you may have had an image of a gym and you're like, in this, in this gym, my, my TV just (laughs) <laughs> my full screen. I don't know if it came on automatically. Has that been on the whole time? You didn't even. T- <laughs> I, I, I can't see it. Yeah, well, but it's like I can see like a reflection in the in the thing here, and I'm like, uh. anyway, um, you know, you mentioned how in the um, in the in the traditional gym, you have nothing but really for you know for the most part, right? Traditionally seats and you're like who's getting he's like he's like who's getting healthy in this environment where there's just seats right and and building overall total body strength and you talked about how each machine really was gyms were modeled essentially after bodybuilding uh methodology and it clicked and i was like oh wait a minute wow I hadn't thought of the gym that way, right? Like the gym that people go to for fitness, right? They assume that they're going in there for fitness, but they don't recognize that the equipment that's in there is designed for bodybuilders, right? And it's like um, anti-fitness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. And and so the thing is, we collapse, like you said, the guy who looks um, jacked, right, with being fit. And perhaps that's the collapse, right? Is that we've got certain image of what it looks like to be fit in contrast to, and and this is the illustration that I was drawing a blank on before. You said 25% of the people who are crossing the finish line are um, people, you know, at a marathon or whatever it might be, right? They're able to do that, right? But but they they don't necessarily have the strength, right? Um, That they really ultimately maybe need. I don't know if that's how you framed it, but... Um, but the, the paradox ultimately is that we go to the, we go to the gym to work out and to be fit, but the di- gym is not designed for, for fitness, not the kind of fitness that, you know, our body lends itself, lends yeah. itself very well to everyday life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have and, to define fitness. You know, fitness is is work capacity, really. The very simplest way to describe it mm-hmm. is fitness is just your body's ability to do work. Yeah. When I'm sitting down, yeah, I can't do a lot of work sitting down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you want to be fit, 
you got to yep. stand up and you got to do some work. And yep. we kind of know what that is. You know, yep. we, we inherently kind of get it. Right. But we've been put into this model of go to the gym, sit there, sit there, sit there, sit there, and then you're going to be fit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make any yeah. sense. And that's the thing that blew me away. That it, I, I, I didn't even think about that. Oh well, you know, fitness is a is a whole body experience. I mean, like, yes, I'm working on my body, but it's it's not just like you said, spending an hour on your biceps so you can have a half uh, half inch and gains in your arms, right? Um, yeah. Which, yeah, sure, it's physically like a, a feat, but not really like. Uh, reinforcing like a certain kind of strength, right? Um, so, to- I want aesthetics mm-hmm. and performance, and you can build tremendous aesthetics. Yes. While, and I think I would argue faster. Yeah. When you when you train the body, the yeah. system, right? Instead of each individual muscle group, you can get results even faster. So you can still look like that. That you know, you can be really buff. Right. And you can be, and you can have incredible performance. That's right. You know, I want both. I don't want just aesthetics and yeah. I don't want just performance. Yeah. I want both. Yeah. Just like stamina and strength, right? Yeah. And that's where the triangle comes in. To get that, you have to have all of those things come together. Right? Mm. And uh, so to, to, to take it a step further and we'll uh, close this out, this segment of it, you mentioned that there's um, two things someone needs to work out, right? Um, there was, I think you said it was a, a barbell and then there was like this other, um, this other piece. Um, uh, I, again, this is you educating me, man, like, you know, uh, and, and educating everybody who's listening, right? Cause they haven't gotten a chance to be exposed to your, to your material. But what, what was it like? You just simplified working out. You're like, look, you need this and you need this. Do you remember? Yeah. So we want to develop strength. Right. And we want to have some, we want to have some endurance, right? We want to be able to, to yeah. build a gas tank. And those two things, they, they're sort of separate, but in, again, in, in real life, they're, they're together, right? So um, the precision instruments, remember my whole thing is we want to keep this very, very simple. We want to, right. we want to create an elegant solution. Right? Yeah. So the, the precision instrument for developing full body, real world strength, and even conditioning, depending on how we program it, is a barbell, like the Olympic bar, you know, like the one you use for bench pressing, right? Yeah, right. Except what's, what's the problem with bench pressing? Um, it's a test. <laughs> you're lying down. <laughs> yeah, you're lying down, right? <laughs> You've already lost the fight. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you can push your opponent, right? <laughs> Away, right? Yeah. That's the justification. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So anyway, so the barbell and there's, there's, you know, who are the the strongest, most powerful athletes in the world? You know, the power, uh, the, the power lifters. You know, they've got some specific exercises they use. They they use the barbell. Who are the most powerful athletes in the world? They're the weightlifters. Think clean and jerk and snatch in the Olympics. Right. So when we learn and develop and practice it's the barbell, Brian. Yeah, one of my uh, one of my uh, viewers here. It's the bar. It's the barbell. Barbell. The- yeah. Not yeah, the dumbbell. Bar- yeah, the not barbell. the kettlebell or kettleball. It's, it's the bar- barbell, but it's the one that's on the ground for you to pull up and... There's lots of things you can do with it. Okay, you cool. Know, I, pick, I, picked on the, I picked on the bench press a little bit. I, I love the bench press, but yeah, it's if a, we're it's looking funny. for a bang for your buck, yeah. there's other things that we can do to, to create even more uh, efficiency to get you from you know, this place to this place with your strength and, and power. Good. Um, and uh, and I and I know I'm, I'm, it's gonna click as soon as we are, we move from this. There was um, it's like the barbell, and there was. Is there another exercise that you mentioned in that part of your training? Um, yeah, I've been avoiding it because every time I say this word, everybody, you're gonna lose everybody in your podcast. <laughs> uh, let's lose them. Let's lose them. <laughs> Look, this is only for the few. This is only for the few. Come on, Tony, don't hold back. Let us have it. Barbells and burpees. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> you know what? You're right. You're right. I hate burpees. Yes, I hate burpees. everybody hates burpees. I, and, 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 you know, a few years ago when I started to sort of uh, make some shifts and adjustments in my uh, routine, um, 
I just remember, you know, it was like the first time I'd done them with some consistency. I was like, oh man, these are not fun at all. You know, give me one second. I got to pause for a second because that light I'm seeing it in my other camera is it's, it's going to bug me. Give me one second. Okay. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Yay. All right. So, um, burpees, man, why'd you hold back? You should have told us burpees from day one. I, re I knew it. Yes barbells and burpees that's that's it and so um you know like i said i you know they were a part of you know i'd done them with some consistency and i was like man these are just not fun and like anything else right whether it's broccoli or whatever the thing is that we don't enjoy uh, it's it's good for us right and part of it was it was a full body thing you know i'd kind of and we mixed them with some other movements right get down explode you know, um, you know, do, uh, what mountain climbers or stair climber type exercise. Like, it's like my whole body was like, you know, it was just, this is, you know, this is killing me. Right. But in a sense, you know, of course the sense of accomplishment, once your body does get, you know, uh, that conditioned, you just really do feel different. Right. You feel sort of like you feel your body together. Um, so burpees, that was the second thing. So, um, barbells and burpees are the two exercises for some, from a simplification perspective that, you know, is really um, one of the sort of secret ingredients, right? To being able to opt, you know, have this triangle of transformation be complete. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that'll be the, the fitness side of it. Yeah. Yeah. Master the ways of the barbell, learn the barbell, learn those skills. Yeah. And give yourself a barbell. Yeah. I mean, you, you can, it'll, it'll, if you get a good one, it'll last you for the rest of your life. And if you can learn the skills. Yeah you can develop your strength and maintain a very high level of strength for the rest of your life. It's like, mm. it's the one piece of equipment that if, if everything else was taken away from me, yeah. it's the one piece that I would, I would hold on to. Wow. Because of just how powerful it is. <clears throat> and burpees, it's kind of interesting because you don't need, you don't need a gym. You can just yep. do it in your living room. You can do it in your hotel room if you're traveling. Yeah. yeah. And we can get quite a, a, a dose of cardiorespiratory conditioning when we program them in a certain way. So for example, like if I told you to do 50 burpees yeah. as fast as you could, yeah. what would that feel like? Yeah. I'd be winded. I'd be burned, maybe burn, right? Yeah, Everything burned. Yeah, I'd be finished. I already know. I already know. I, I already I, I'm already opting out of that class. <laughs> you still there? I think you froze. I think you froze. You still there? Welcome. Earth to Tony, Earth to Tony. You're frozen, you're frozen. Oh man, I think we might have lost him. We might have lost him. Earth to Tony, Earth to Tony, you're back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Okay, so yeah, so you're still here. Um, so the um you know, the last thing we were talking about was really just full circle or full triangle, right? Instead of full circle, the transformational triangle, right? Uh, sleep, nutrition, and fitness. And we dug in an action. In action, right. And then, and then in the middle of that, in action. And that yeah. actually is naturally uh, the next, the, the segue into sort of what someone who's hearing this, you know, really needs to be doing if they are a fit for you know, what you do, what you, what, you know, what you do in the world. Right. So, um, you know, I mentioned to you that, you know, I kind of like bring to this whole thing, uh, the cynic, right. Perspective of, Oh, sleep, huh. But then you kind of shut that down. Right. And then I, Oh, nutrition. Oh, eat better food. Oh, okay. And I'm like, well, what about how much should I be eating? You know? And then you're like, yep. Yep. And now we talked about, you know, from an exercise perspective, um, the simplification. So, if I'm sort of on the outside looking and I'm thinking about this whole thing, I'm going, all right, well, all right, Tony. So it sounds like, you know, what you're talking about, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And I mean, you've beat cancer twice. All right. Um, you've figured out over the course of 17 years, gym ownerships, um, thousands of people who've worked with you personally. All right. You know, those guys in the Muppets, the guys who sit in the balcony, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe you do have, maybe, maybe you are the guy that can help me. Um, but I'm not convinced. 
So can you share at least one or two stories of like some of the guys who work with you and kind of results that they've pr produced uh, as sort of evidence of your method? Because you said, it, you know, it worked on you, but how does it work for other people? Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I just, I kind of want to throw a question back at you because I think we all, <laughs> we all know this, right? Yeah. And it's like, when, when does, when does eating better food, sleeping good at night, which is a way to manage stress yeah, and moving your body, when doesn't that work to get somebody healthier? Yeah. It works literally works a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. My job is to refine the process and to make it as simple as possible. Yeah. So that a busy guy can fit this into their life who doesn't want to spend three hours in the gym, doesn't want to count calories, obsess over food labels, and do all this, this, you know, bullshit that's out there. Yeah. How can we make this very simple yet still very, very effective? Yeah. And that's what I do. You know, I think we all kind of buy into this idea that you have to have some faith, you know, do you believe that better nutrition, moving your body and sleeping good at night is good for you? Right. 99% of the folks I've talked to are like, yeah, totally. I get it. Just mm -hmm. tell me what I need to do. And I don't want to do this, 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 or this. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You know, it's yeah, yeah. simplifying it. It's making it real world applicable. You know, <clears throat> I, I agree with that. I, I feel like, uh, that's that one of the things I, I broke through um, a few years ago. And what I mean by that is, um, man, if I showed you a photo of like the body that I kind of allowed myself to have um, probably about 2017-ish, maybe 2016, 2017, um, it was, uh, you know, one of my biggest things was like time and, and how do I do this? And, and I just had all kinds of like, I'm going to do a diagram, right? And every muscle group on my body, I'm going to write an excuse. Not enough time. Um, I'm too busy. Uh, later, right? Like if I would have, my body like was a body of excuses, right? And um, to your point about simplicity, when I started to engage and participate, you know, and at that time for a window of the time anyway, I did have access to a gym and, and, and I took advantage of that as well. Um, but overall it was really cutting through the noise, right? Cause I didn't have time to be a nutritional scientist. I didn't have time to, um, just, you know, go through, oh, supplements. And we didn't even talk. <laughs> Don't get me started. Oh man, we, we are just about to run out of time. Oh, that was one of the things I wanted to talk to, talk to him about. Oh man. And you know, I didn't have time to figure out what supplements should I be taking, not be taking how much, all of that. Right. Um, and, um, and I needed efficiency. You know what I'm saying? Like I needed like something that, that was just practical. And, and for me generally, if I just, this is my own sort of workout process. If I'm in the gym more than 30 minutes, I'm in there too long. Like that's, my experience, right? Like my, whether it's call it my attention span, because I just know if I'm in there more than 30 minutes, and if you really think about exercises in general, like if you do a set, a set is usually not more than a minute. Like if you're lifting heavy weight, like what are you going to be lifting 225 for a full minute? That's not, I mean, four reps, six reps, depending on what it is, you're not under that, under that bell or that bar uh, for more than a minute. Right. And then you take a 30 second break and then you get back on, you know, get back to doing it, your set unless you're on the phone, you know, maybe you're working, you know, working out in a group. But for me personally, the simplicity of that time and the effectiveness and the intensity is what made all the difference for me. And I'm sure anybody who's listening, watching can really appreciate, you know, you know, having that and someone who's a master at tailoring what it needs to be for each person. Right. And th that they're working with. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so fast forward to one of your clients who I, I read about, and I know you have their testimonial a little bit was, uh, was an attorney, I think who, um, I don't know if he, what was it that he, he, he said he'd like gotten close to his college weight in like 30 days. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah we've got so many different success stories. It's crazy. But yeah, I mean, there's a guy who came in, I think he was like 218 pounds and, uh, he went back down to his college weight, which I, he played hockey in college. And I think he was like 180 or 185. And he went down to that 
just without even counting calories, without just doing this stuff. Mm. And now he's been able to sustain it. I've been working with him for almost a year now. Yeah. So that was, it was amazing. But yeah, we've got all kinds of results like that. And it's just, it's just a matter of willing to, to make the, the change and willing to, you know, make yourself a priority and, and be willing to do some of this work. And, and it works, like I said, it works a hundred percent of the time if you're willing to do the work, you know? Yeah. Um, so in, in closing here, I know that, you know, for anybody who's now kind of convinced, right. And they, they, they've gone from, what's this guy have to say to, Hmm. Okay. All right. It's making sense. The transformational triangle. All right. Sleep, nutrition, fitness. All right. Barbell and burpees. All right. Uh, let's see how, you know, could this really work for me? Right. So um, next natural step, I would imagine, is <clears throat> this is that is that sort of action moment. And I know you. Uh, yeah, you really just you're about action. Right. You're like, look, no matter how much, you know, the only way researching. Right. So you had this circle and, you know, in another maybe another uh, interview, you know, we can kind of go through the models. Right. As far as how they work out, because I really found those to be fascinating. But you're like you said, you know, people start out motivated. Right. And then they do research. And then after they do research. Um, Build knowledge. Oh, they gain, they gain the knowledge. And then after yeah. that knowledge, they try to like figure it out on their own and they get paralyzed. Yeah. Right. And then and they have to wait for another bout of motivation before they go back to the get back, again. Yeah, to, to come back in full circle again. And, um, and I feel like, you know, someone watching this now, you know, you might be at that place where you're looking for motivation. Maybe you saw me running around like a crazy person. Um, and you're thinking, oh man, you know, I need to get back in shape again. And you're not motivated. And maybe this interview right now is the interview that's giving you or having you feel like, um, okay, um, yeah, I, I'm motivated. Uh, you know, I've done, I've done a little bit of research uh, on all the calorie methods and all the diets. Um, and uh, now I've got some knowledge. So now you've watched this webinar and you're thinking, oh, I got some knowledge. I, I, okay, I can do burpees and da, da, da. And I think you warn us about DIY, right? Like, you know, after watching this and even your training, like, you know, you caution uh, people about that DIY approach and why it's so dangerous, <laughs> right? And, uh, and what they need to do is, you know, in response to the threat of the DIY mentality. Can you speak to that a little bit as we wrap up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's even, there's even research done around this on DIY methods and it's something like 90% of the folks that embark on a fitness program on their own never stick with it. Yeah. Not to say they don't get results because a lot of people will get some results, but then they just stop and it's gone. Yeah. Right. So when you have, it's okay to reach out for support. Yeah. That's, that's a big step, right? I mean, to, to actually ask for help and to ask for accountability and support and a step-by-step -step process, exactly what you need to do and to get over a lot of the mind things that come up that tend to derail us when we're trying to do things on our own, yeah. you know, cause so much of this is a mental game. You know, we didn't even really talk about that cause that could be, you know, that's a whole nother world, but so much of this is mental. So, you know, the DIY works for some people, but the truth of it is it's a very, very small percentage of folks. Right. Okay. To ask for help. When I went through cancer the second time, my first thing, even though I took full responsibility was to go out and get help. That was part of me taking yeah. responsibility. It's okay. Like that's a, that's a sign to yourself that you're worth it. You know what I mean? Like that's the next level. Yeah. You got to, when it comes to your health, I'm going to tell you hundred percent of the time, it is the most important thing. Like yeah. you don't skimp on that. Like that's the thing that you got to really get dialed in. Yeah. You know, you, Everything. you said something uh, um, that I, I remember hearing, which was that it, you said something about like accountability is not cheap. You remember that? Yeah, like, yeah, like, vaguely. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. accountability or getting the help that you need is not really it's not cheap. And um um and I think a lot of times, you know, in the DIY, right, people are, you know, trying to save money, right? They don't want to necessarily work with a specialist, they don't want to necessarily 
um, <clears throat> whatever the investment is for them to get the kind of detailed attention from, you know, some of the peak performing guys like yourself. Um, and, um, but of course, in the end, they end up back to square one again, right? Search, searching online, getting confused, getting paralyzed, and then trying to figure it all out on their own. And, um, and so for someone who says, all right, all right, I get the point. Um, I should probably get some help, right? Or at least know if I'm in the right, like what's going on with me and, and which, which part of this triangle, right? I'm hurting in, um, you know, what do they do to get a hold of you? Or how do they even start um, working, working with you? Because I, 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 would know, I would imagine if I'm watching this, I mean, part of the reason why I have you on here is because you're the guy whose work I've come across that I just, like you said, it works 100% of the time, right? If you put the work in. And I also know the value of coaching, you know, um, you know, you and I, we share the same mentor, right? When it comes to this model of work <clears throat> and we know the power of precision coaching. Um, and so part of really being value creators in the world is people being able to get access to those kinds of people. And, and they don't always, they don't always get that, right? They don't always get access or, or you know, they'll go through a few clowns, have to kiss a few frogs, right? Um, before they really get to the, the real deal kind of guy. So, um, what's like your accessibility like? Like, are you available? Like, I, I, I know you have a, a site, of course. I know I haven't checked on all the social media platforms, but like, like what's really like for someone who's now looking at this and going, all right, I want, I, I'm willing to have a, a conversation or at least I'd like to learn more. Like, what's that process like? Because even, even that in and of itself is like, there's a certain way that you go about that. So do I apply? Do I like, hey, you know, email you, like, what's, what's that process like? Yeah, great question. So yeah, in order to come into the Athletic After 40 program and be coached by me, and we've got some other people in there that help me as well, but in order to come in there, we would have to have a conversation. So it's, okay. it's something that, that I, it's a, it's a prerequisite for anybody to come in. You mm -hmm. know, we have to just make sure that we're going to be a good fit for whoever is coming into the program yeah. and that everything that I'm saying, of course, makes sense to them, right? It has to be a, a sort of a mutual fit. Yeah. So what I'd love to do, and I think you mentioned in the beginning, you know, I want to offer you, your, your listeners something. I would love to give you access to my schedule for a consult. So anybody who's interested in, in, a, in doing a call with me personally, I'm happy to do that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just give you the link and then okay. you can post that somewhere. I don't know where, I'll, I'll let you decide where you, what you wanna do with that to, to, to get to your listeners, but yeah. I'll give you the link to my, my personal schedule and we can go from there. How does that sound? Yeah, that, that'll work. I mean, it's not every day you get a chance to really honestly speak with a, uh, a US you know, athletic uh, coach, right? For yeah, we didn't even get to talk about that. Like, I oh, like talking about that. <laughs> I, I know, I know, man. It's like so, so, so much, so much meat, right? To cut through and to, to, to consume here, man. But you know, it's not an everyday thing. And I think that's one of the things. You know, I really talked about this in, in you know, leading up to now. I talked about how, you know, we look online and we see people who are, you know, let's just say stars or. or key people, right? Hollywood or whatever the industry is. And somehow we just feel like we can vicariously inherit their character traits because we follow them online, because we see their uh, Instagram stories, right? But <clears throat> the truth is, um, you know, and, and some people try to be accessible, like they'll do, they'll have their fans follow and they'll give them sort of live coaching like this. But what, what I've learned along the way is a five minute conversation with like a star or something like that, that makes me feel like, ah, right. Is not like that person's not going to go in the gym with me tomorrow morning. That person's not going to, you know, do X, Y, Z that I need to do for myself. Right. Um, and, and they're not going to hold me accountable. Right. Like, sure. They want me to win, but unless I'm in some sort of, agreeable or agreed upon relationship with them, I can't expect to produce the results that they're producing, right? And I think, um, you know, as sort of, you know, my experience in knowing and now that I've kind of started to research and dig into your work, I'm like, it, it, you know, I mean, you're the real deal, right? And, uh, and I think, you know, but not just that, it's 
there's a way to access you, right? And I think most people don't understand there's a premium. If you want to talk to some of these guys who are supposedly like the gurus or whatever, it's like you got to go through a program and then you got like seven levels to get to their mastermind where they really teach you the secret sauce. It's like, are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> Right. It's like, it's like a $7 program and then like a $13 program. And then if you, you know, three landing pages later, it's like, Oh, well, it's like, you know, but you still don't get the guy. Right? You still can't access the person who's, who's the actual person who's going to give you those results. And it's almost like you're sold the DIY solution. Right. And I get it. I, I totally get the economics of it. But this is like one of those kind of rare, original, you know, or really uncommon situations where you get to just access the guy, right? And then get the results that you want. And, and you know, Tony will tell you guys, like, you're either going to get the results or you're not. Like, your, your program is either right for him, even if you're over 40. Like, if you're, if you guys think and thinking, this ain't the program for you, <laughs> right? Um, if you, if like, like, yeah, Tony's not going to BS you and like have you consider being part of his sort of, you know, elite group of people that he trains just because uh, he's uh, thirsty and hungry. Aha! No, <laughs> Tony actually wants to work with people who actually are going to be great illustrations of the principles at work. So anyway, uh, I don't know if you have any final words, man, before we wrap up here. This has uh, been a, a treat, but get, a, any final words that you've got? Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on. It's been so, so fun. Yeah. This. I get excited talking about this. This is just it's so, so fun. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's as, as any good coach, we want our clients to win. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's the, the number one thing. We, you know, I'm here to serve you, to serve others. That's what yeah. I'm here for. Yeah. And I believe that me going through cancer and all these other things, yeah. What I was planning to do was to serve others and to help others. And this just happens to be my gift. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's um, important to me, you know, to make sure that the people are winning. So we have to make sure we're bringing the right people on the bus. And, mm -hmm. you know, if it's somebody who's really willing to do the work, it's amazing the transformation that you can make. And it's amazing how amazing you can be. You know, I think we sell ourselves short sometimes and it's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but you can, you can be incredible in yeah. so many different ways. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you know, you talk about having a coach that shares your values, um, having a coach that's uh, produced results um, that, you know, identifies with your journey. And, you know, I know you have that, that, that criteria that you just shared about. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people don't really necessarily think about that, right? Like um, some coaches, and one of the things you actually clarified was you said, you know, there's, there's a lot of coaches out there, but they don't have a system, yes. right? And you distinguish that. And I think that's really key is, um, you, you know, they're great at what they do and however they've done it, but they don't have this template. They don't have this system that guarantees consistent results regardless of who they're coaching, right? And that's the deciding factor a lot of times, right? Is that um, you want to re really work with people, right? Who can appreciate sh the structure, the support, and the accountability, right? Inside of a system. And that's, that's, that's what separates like superior coaches from people who just say, I'm, 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 a, I'm a coach, right? And, um, and I think, so guys, for those of you who are considering, um, of course, reaching out to Tony, I'll get you the, uh, I'll make sure wherever you see this in the description section that you got an opportunity to, to work with Tony. Um, this has been a, you know, part of an effort to, um, to really create conscious content, right? And conscious content really comes down to um, content that empowers you to become your greatest enlightened expression of yourself, right? If you know you come away with this, I mean, obviously you can take what Tony has shared. Look, um, sleep, right? Um, and I know I don't know if we touched on this. Um, the four qualities of sleep: um, continuous. Um, uh, it was like continuous duration, continuity, duration, continuity, quality, and I'm uh, blanking on the last one right now. Yeah. So, you know, from a sleep perspective, like if you can work on that, you know, 
sleep wise, right? And then recognize the impact in the relationship between sleep and your well being, like a genuine connection, not just, oh, I know I should get better sleep, right? The technical need, like at a cellular level, right? When you sleep less, you invite um, ill health, right? Um, and it, you know, it, it had to do consistency as far as, you know, you can't like be like, oh, four hours today, two hours tomorrow. Okay, I'll sleep 12 hours the next day. It's like, it's gotta be like consistent, right? Um, and then on the nutrition side, if you can't, uh, fruits, seeds, meats, veggies, right? Uh, I can't, uh, if there's anything else I'm forgetting. I want everybody to write that down and put it on their fridge. <laughs> yeah. You want a great nutrition program that works? Yeah. Meat, veggies, nuts, seeds, and fruit. Like it's that simple. All right. So Don't complicate it. Yeah. That's it. So you heard it here, folks. Put it on the fridge. And then they, when they're nibbling on a wafer, you're like, is that a meat, seed, fruit? <laughs> <laughs> and then the third thing is, you know, uh, as far as fitness is concerned, um, you know, really compound exercises, especially as, as constituted by burpees and dumbbells. If you're doing something else, fr- fantastic. Like me, I'm a pull ups, push ups, sit ups, dips, uh, you know, run around the track to kind of keep my, you know, uh, metabolism or, or uh, cardio system going, right? Like that's part of me. I don't have um, a dumbbell, but maybe I'll, I'll add that to my barbell, barbell sorry, uh, to my um, Christmas, <laughs> Christmas list of items to get. Um, but the main thing is there are things you can walk away with here. And of course, try on your own. But for those who are really like, if you said, this is the year I'm done, like I'm done with the, oh, one last thing I got to share this, that you said in your training was, um, you said, if you, (laughs) if you are afraid to get, if you, you, you're going to say this better than that. If you're afraid to get naked, <laughs> if you got to get naked in the dark <laughs> to, to engage in adult activities with your significant <laughs> other, yeah, you need this program. Yes, that's a problem. <laughs> I yes. think, I think that's a, missing out. <laughs> I think I'm going to end it on that. If you are, <laughs> if you are timid about getting naked, <laughs> If, you're, if you can't get naked in the light, <laughs> you need to be a part <laughs> of this program. All right. On that, Tony, I think uh, I'm good to go. I'll circle back and catch up with you as far as uh, the links and everything else that we need to do to just make sure you're, of course, the community of people that you've worked with, I'm sure they'd love to hear the story, right? And, and sort of get it again as they listen to this uh, cycle and this process. Um, but anyway, guys, I appreciate you. If you're watching this on Facebook, uh, like this video, comment if this has made a difference, subscribe to the channel. If you see it on Facebook, of course, do the same, but you know, like and follow. Um, and if you need to get access to me, of course, you can always um, catch me on Facebook. That's one of the places you can send me a message or Instagram. And um, I think that covers it you know, as, as the <laughs> sirens go off in the background. And uh, Tony, I appreciate you, man. Um, thanks for the work that you're doing in the world. Uh, keep, you know, of course, inspiring those people who you've inspired and hopefully they continue to inspire other people, right? That's one of my mantras, inspire people to inspire people. And uh, you and I will be in touch. I'm looking forward. I think we, 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 there's so many segments of your work um, that I would love to even break down even further and like give people an opportunity to hear about because it's just so rich and um, filled with just great, great actionables right and even just mind-blowing things that people just naturally just um don't even think about right including like an example of what i said about the gym and how the gym is not really optimally designed for fitness it's designed for bodybuilding um and again you know i'm sure some people are like well my gym is not set up like that okay we know <laughs> <laughs> we know we know but you the gist is traditionally gyms as far as the model right? Yeah, we get it. You can do yoga. There's a sauna. There's, yes, we know. But based on those exercises, um, you know, like for me anyway, it was, it was a wild moment. So thank you again, man, for opening our eyes and minds to just seeing what we, what's possible, right? And uh, stay athletic over 40, man. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, we'll see you all soon. And uh, Tony, I'll catch up with you soon. All right. Thank you. You got it.